Uh, continuing the uh, brake rebuild series for the Statson 240Z. Uh, in this episode, I'm rebuilding some front calipers. So these guys, these are actually the calipers off the uh, car. I originally had planned to, I don't know if you can spot them over there next to the uh, jar, um, but I had planned to rebuild some spare set that I had off a uh, 260Z 2 plus 2. Um, consequently, they're seized, um, and oh, that would require a significant amount of soaking to get them apart. So I thought, well, I rebuild the original ones. Um, so I've, I've drained the system and pulled them off. Um, but yeah, these are a Sumitomo S16 calipers, I believe. That's that's their designation. These twin pot ones, and they're fairly common on a bunch of cars, I believe they're on Volvos. Uh, my Toyota Corona XT130 1981 model has them on, on it as well, so they were used a lot. Um, so, yeah, let's get pulling these apart and getting them rebuilt. Okay, so this is the caliper, um, Sumitomo S16 caliper. Uh, first thing we're going to do is um, just get these pins out that hold the brake pads and the anti-squeal shims in. Um, Remove those first, and then pull those out. Hopefully these pins will come out with not too much effort. So these are the brake pads with the anti-squeal shims on the back. Uh, important to note which direction uh, they're facing. So this is the caliper. Uh, next task is to do a visual inspection. Um, it, the caliper itself is made up of two halves. You can see the join line through there. It's held together by uh, four bolts. Uh, the ducts between the, uh, the brake line connection through to this piston here, uh, I've got little O-rings in them. The only reason you would pull this apart is if it was leaking about the join through those O-rings. Uh, there's no other reason to, to separate them. And in this case, ignore that, that's just come out from the, it's still leaking out. Um, I've, I've got no leaks along the join, so I have no reason to be uh, pulling it apart. So the next thing is to get these pistons out and replace the dust seal and the piston seal uh, that sits in the housing. Uh, the dust seal is held in by a metal clip that runs around it. You just pop out and sits in a rebate in the edge of the piston. Uh, I, I have no need to pull this apart, give it a nice clean and uh, make it look pretty because I think these originally came out in the alloy color. Um, and ultimately I'm going to have, uh, if I can get myself a pair, a set of MK63 Sumitomo calipers, the four piston ones, I'll put them on and most likely give them a clean up and a, uh, make them look very pretty. But for now, I'll get these pist uh, these dust seals off and then I'll get these pistons out with compressed air. Okay guys, um, sorry my camera didn't record when I pulled the dust seals out. Um, but essentially the dust seals sit in there and these rings are the ones that sit inside the, um, the recess. So I've taken both of them out, both sides. And now the next part of this journey, oh, God, there we go. Next part of this journey is to apply some compressed air to see if I can push one or both of these pistons out so I can get into the piston seal, as well as look at the condition of these pistons and the ball. Um, and hopefully they will be in good nick. I can see a little bit of corrosion around the top here on some of these, so I'm hoping that's not too serious. So I'm just using uh, an old chopping board, plastic chopping board for in between my pistons um, so that if they burst out they don't damage each other. But anyway, we'll apply some air. Well, all cleaned up, nothing like a bit of a mess for excitement. So uh, what happened there was it pushed the bottom piston or what was on the bottom out and all the fluid came out everywhere so what I'm going to try and do 
is push this bottom piston back in and seeing if I can hold it with a set of multi grips and get the top piston out as well. Okay, so what's happened is this is bottom this cylinder on the bottom here. It's extremely frozen in there, so what I'm going to do is just uh, start a process of hitting it up with a penetrant. In this case, RP, good old RP7. Um, so I'll keep that soaked. That might take some time uh, before it's loosened enough. So I'll just keep spraying it and trying it with some air and see if it comes out. So in the mortal words of the professor from Futurama, uh, good news everyone. Um, I was able to loosen the problem cylinder. Actually, it popped all the way out. Um, and I tried to see if I could get both pistons out by inserting and holding the good the good piston in um, but yeah uh, it didn't work um, the normal procedure is with that if you're not splitting the two halves of the caliper is to uh, pop out one piston clean it up and complete the rebuild on one side put it back in hold the hold it in place and then pop the other cylinder out and repeat on the other side um, so I'll have to stick to that. Uh, next port of call is to, well actually, I will get the piston seal out of the bore first. Whoop! So that's just the, the seal that sits in the rebate, if you can see that in there. Goes all the way around. Uh, interesting thing to note is um, the seal in these things, um, there's a bit of a, a chamfer on one one face of the the rebate that the the ring sits in. Um, the the seal is responsible for pulling back the piston when you take your foot off the brake. It, it's responsible for releasing that pressure on the brake pad ever so slightly. A um, little bit of interesting or oh, useless information you can impress your better half with, or bore them, maybe. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it. I'll go clean these items up I've just got some cleaning wheel attachments for my Dremel which I will use should be soft enough uh, not to affect the plating on the piston um, if if the the, the the side and the base are very corroded and particularly where the dust seal sits if that's cor corroded beyond uh, quite badly it's probably best to replace these pistons um, so I'll see if I can clean these up I'm not too fussed if there's corrosion around the top remains um, because that's outside the dust seal and that's just on the, the interface of the brake pad um, so I'll go clean this piston up and this bore up and we'll get it assembled so we're as clean as I can get them um, I'm satisfied that this bore is uh, this piston is, is in pretty good condition um, the bore had some a little bit of staining but I mean it certainly doesn't feel pitted or anything uh, the kit I'm using is a Protex kit. Uh, this is just one in my parts bin um, that I had. Uh, I will certainly have a look to see if I can, if you can buy this. I'll, I'll put a link uh, for the Protex kit, but I'll also have a look to see if there's any others uh, that you might be able to buy on eBay or something like that. Just, just as a courtesy to give you guys a hand. Um, so the kit. got uh, the new retaining ring for the dust cover and the other thing I need is the new piston seal so what we're going to do now is put a bit of red rubber grease on this piston seal and put it in the recess so just make sure it's nicely seated in there so putting it in uh, making sure everything's liberally covered in brake fluid, but alignment is very important. Particularly in getting it past that um, seal. So it's in, all the way down. I just had to lean on it a bit, I had to, excuse me, in the end, stick my drift through and actually put my body weight on it to get past the piston but it's um, freely slid all the way down so that's that bit done next bit is the dust seal same again as the 
A bit of rubber grease. So, seals in. A bit of practice, but uh, if you start from one spot and work around making sure you're applying constant pressure, it's easy enough to get it on. That's it. So next step is just to put this ring around the outside of the seal. It's just a matter of expanding it over. Making sure it's pushed all the way down into the groove. And that is how you redo the piston seal and dust cover. So now I will go do the same to the other side. I'll hold on to this with some vice grips or something and pop this one out with air pressure and rinse and repeat. Okay, that's how I rebuild the, the calipers. Um, I've, I've done a few of these over the years. I mentioned earlier my Corona XT130 Toyota Corona. Uh, that has them on there. And the first time I encountered these brake cylinders was, oh, the 20, 18 years ago when I rebuilt my uh, the, them on the Corona back in high school. So they're a good, good durable caliper that um, has a few beneficial, you know, that very little goes wrong with them. So they're a good caliper. Uh, if if you found this uh, helpful, uh, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Also, if, if you know someone who'd benefit from it, uh, ha please share it with them. Um, so yeah, the next thing for this particular car um, with the brake rebuild is uh, the master cylinder and the rear drum cylinders have been sent off for re-sleeving. So uh, the pro just wait for that process to be done. Uh, once they're returned, it'll be put it all back together, bleed it, make sure it works. Might retention the handbrake but um until then I'm, i might have to find some other things to do on this car yeah my shirt copped it a bit um when i popped that first cylinder out and all the brake fluid went everywhere so um this one might have to get turfed if you like this video and got benefit from it i uh, appreciate a like also have a look at the playlist for this brake system rebuild as well as what whatever youtube recommends and if we're meeting for the first time consider subscribing all right thank you for watching i'll catch you in the next vid